Welcome back. In today's video, we're going to introduce the concept of radicals, or square roots and cube roots and, and that type of thing. We're going to begin by taking what we call roots of a number. And the square root is defined as the reverse of squaring a number. So if we have a number like 6 and we square it, or 6 times 6, well, we know that is equal to 36. So the square root of 36, now we're seeking the number that we multiply two times in a row that gives us a product of 36. And of course, that is 6. Well, that also works for negative 6. Negative 6 squared is well, that's negative 6 times negative 6, which is also positive 36. So the square root of 36 could also be negative 6. However, we will always work with what we call the principal square root, or the positive square root. So when we ask for the square of 36, if we're just simplifying right now, we're going to work with just 6, okay? So that would be the positive square root. So if I ask you to just simplify the square root of 81, well, that would just be 9. Now, we could, say, take the opposite of the square root of 81, which then becomes, we know the square root of 81 is 9, so then we'll say that's the opposite of 9, or negative 9. Let's take a look at our square root bar, and we'll, we'll define some of these things. The, when we're taking the square root, we won't have any number here. When I've been taking the square root, I haven't put any number or what we call index here. So the letter N here, N, is our index because we can take things like the cube root that's a 3 there or we could take the fourth root of a number or the fifth root of a number so when we're taking the cube root that's very similar to the square root we're looking for something that's multiplied three times in a row or the fourth root we're looking for the same number to be multiplied four times in a row, or the fifth root, okay? So, for example, the fifth root of 32 is equal to 2, and that's because 2 times 2 times 2 times 2 times 2, the same number multiplied five times in a row by my index is 32, 2 4, 8, 16, 32. Yes, that's correct. Now, the number under the bar, the bar we call the, ra the that's the radical. Then the number underneath, A, is called the radicand. Okay, so now we have defined everything in our square root or our roots. So we have the radical, which is the bar, we have the radicand, and then we have the index. So, some rules for roots. If the index is even, so n, if n is even, and the radicand a is positive or zero, then the nth root of a represents the principal nth root of a. So if we have the fourth root of some number, the fourth root of 16, so our radicand is positive, the index 4 is even, so we're just going to have the principal square root, which is going to be 2. And then the opposite 
of n to the a represents the negative nth root. So if we had the opposite of the fourth root of 16, that would equal negative 2. Now if the index n is even, so we have an even root, a square root, a fourth root, a sixth root, etc., and the radicand is negative, then our simplified answer is there's no real number. So right now, we can't take the square root of negative 16 or the fourth root of negative 81. That is not going to be a real number. And those are imaginary numbers, and we'll cover those at another time. Now, if the index n is odd, there is, act, there is exactly one nth root from that. So if we have an odd index, like the fifth root of negative 32, well, that we can do because a negative 2 times a negative 2 times a negative 2 times a negative 2 times a negative 2, we have an odd number of negatives, don't we? We have an odd index, so an odd number of negatives will give us a negative solution and simplify to a negative number. Whereas an even number of negatives, an even number of negatives will always give us a positive. So that's why we can't take an even root of a negative number, but we can take an odd root of a negative number. because so we have an odd number of negatives that we're trying to multiply. So let's do some samples. Uh, we got some square roots, some fourth roots, some cube roots. Let's take a look at these, some real straightforward ones. The square root of 64, that we should know from our perfect squares, that we're just going to get the principal square root of that. That's going to be 8. The square root of negative 121 is the opposite of 11. The cube root of 8, 27. Well, that can be rewritten as the cube root of 8 over the cube root of 27. So that's something to keep in mind. We can break down our roots like that. And the cube root of 8 is 2. And the cube root of 27 is 3. The square root of 18 over 8. Well, 18 is not a perfect square. 8 is not a perfect square. We could look at this as the square root of 9 times the square root of 2, because 9 times 2 is 18, all divided by the square root of 4 times the square root of 2. 4 times 2 is 8, and the square root of 2 over the square root of 2 using our fundamental property simplifies and becomes 1. So now I really want the square root of 4, square root of 9 divided by the square root of 4, which is 3 halves. The fourth root of 16 divided by the fourth root of 81. Here's another little twist we can do. The fourth root is the same as asking for the square root of the square root. Okay? The fourth root is really two square roots. So we could look at it like that. Now the good news is, is both of these are perfect fourths, if you will, but we could simplify from inside out. Well, I know that the square root of 16 is 4, so then I've got the square root of 4 all divided by, and the square root of 81 is 9 over the square root of 9. And the square root of 4 over the square root of 9 simplifies to 2 thirds. The cube root of negative 64 thousandths. Now we can do this without a calculator. I like to do this in fraction form. Now I have a negative number, but I have an odd index. So I, this will work. I can take a root, a third root of a negative number. And I'm going to rewrite this as the cube root of 64 all over the cube root of, that would be a negative 64, 
over the cube root of 1,000. Well, the cube root of negative 64 is negative 4. Well, negative 4 times negative 4 times negative 4 is negative 64. And the cube root of 1,000 is 10. 10 times 10 times 10 is 1,000. So negative 4 over negative 10, that simplifies to negative 2 fifths. So once again, we can see that fractions are our friends. That works really well for us. And the square root of negative 36, I'll let you figure that out and bring that to class. Now let's add some variables to our roots. For any real number, the square root of a squared, that's going to be the absolute value of a. We know that if a is 5, so we take the square root of 5 squared. Well, since the square root and the square are inverse operations, they, they sort of cancel each other out. Okay, so we might see that and say, well, that answer is just 5. These are inverse operations. The square root and the square cancel each other out. But what if I did the square root of like negative 6 squared? If we simply just crossed off the these two and said, oh, they're inverse operations, we'd get negative 6. Well, we know that, that that's not quite right because negative 6 quantity squared, well, that's the square root of 36, and the square root of 36 can't be, the principal square root can't be negative 6. So this really is the square root of negative 6 squared. That answer should be positive 6. Well, what's going to make negative 6 a positive 6? Well, imposing the absolute value bars. So for any real number a, the square root of a squared equals the absolute value of a. So if I have the square root of negative 9 squared, our solution is the absolute value of negative 9 because I'm taking an even root of an even number or of an even exponent. So the absolute value of negative 9 is 9. So let's apply that here. So the square root of 15 squared, well, these are inverse operations. The would be the absolute value of 15, which is 15. The square root of negative y squared, so I have an even exponent, so that is going to be the absolute value of the opposite of y, which is y. Now I don't have a square root here, but I do have an even index and I have an even exponent so my answer will be and these are going to be inverse operations again my answer will be the absolute value of negative 5 which is 5. The sixth root of y to the 18th here we go I've got an even exponent on my variable and so I'm looking for something that multiplied six times in a row would give me y to the 18th. Well, 18 is divisible by 6. That's an important concept. 18 is divisible by 6. So this would be the absolute value of y cubed, which is simply y cubed. No, nope, it's not. It's, it would stay the absolute value of y cubed. Now, let's look at the fourth root of m to the eighth. 8 divided by 4 is 2. So we would get m squared. And we can just leave this as m squared because uh, if we square m, that's always going to become a positive number. Now, we had to leave y cubed in the absolute value bars because 
if y were a negative number, we'd end up with a negative result. And that's not going to happen. So that's why when we end up with an odd exponent here, we have to put that in absolute value bars. So take good note of that, why the odd exponent is in the absolute value bars, but the variable with the even exponent does not have to be in absolute value bars. Approximating square roots, our final thing for today. We can approximate square roots, and I'll expect you to do this without a calculator. Uh, it takes a little bit of thought, but we can approximate the square roots like the square root of 20. Now, 20 is not a perfect square, but it does fall between two perfect squares. It falls between the square root of 16 and the square root of 25. Well, the square root of 16, we know that's 4, and the square root of 25 is 5, so we should know that the square root of 20 falls somewhere in between. Well, the square root of 16 is 4 away from the square root of 20, and it's 5 away from the square root of 25, so the square root of 20 is probably just a shade under, well, 4.5. Um, so we might say that, that the square root of 20 is about 4.5. Um, we could look at the square root of 72. Well, the square root of 72 falls between the square root of 64 and the square root of 81. Well, the square root of 64 is 8, the square root of 81 is 9, so it falls somewhere between 8 and 9. Uh, it looks like this would be 8 away from 64 is 8 away from 72, and 72 is 9 away from 81. Oh, I'm right in the middle again. Probably could have chosen something a little better. Uh, so once again, that's going to be about 8.5. Uh, let's do something. Let's do like the square root of 50. That's not going to fall right in the middle. Square root of 50 falls between our perfect squares, the square root of 49 and the square root of 64. So it falls between 7 and 8. So the square root of 50, I would say that is about 7.1. And why don't you bring to class your non-calculator approximation of the square root of 130? I want to see your work. I want to see which square roots and how far away they are, and then you bring me your best guess for that. That wraps up our introduction to radicals, and we will see you in class.